Alright guys, welcome back to another tutorial. As always, this one's going to be pretty short. This one is uh, related to the procedural surface imperfections video, which has done quite well, I think. It's a lot simpler than that though. This material is a procedural rusting effect, and it's actually quite cool. The setup is incredibly simple, and this works in both EV and Cycles Renderer. You're also going to learn how to use color ramps to change and edit a texture that is fully procedural and non-destructive. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right, so go ahead and open up a new Blender file. I'm going to be using a UV sphere for this example, shade smooth that, and then go into the shading tab. So the first thing we need to add is a rust map. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a noise texture for that. You can use whatever you want, but I think the noise texture is really good for demonstration. This is usually good with a little bit of roughness. Make sure to turn up the detail. Okay, so that is my rust map. This is what I'm going to be using to decide which parts are rusted and which parts aren't. So let me go ahead and just make a metal material. So I turn up the metallic, turn down the roughness, and this is what the basic metal material is going to be. All right, so to dictate the color of this, I'm gonna plug this into the base color. And again, this is your rust map. Go ahead and add a color ramp and now you can use this for the base color so this black part here this needs to be turned up to white to match the metal color drag this in add a second one and now pick a nice orangish reddish rust color so i usually turn the saturation down a little bit and then the value down so this is a pretty nice looking rust color now choose a much darker brown as well. This is the color done. Now I just need to use this same color ramp to dictate everything else. So I'm gonna plug this into the roughness. Make sure everything that is on your roughness map is desaturated all the way. That way it makes it easier to pick the colors. So obviously the metallic part needs to be much shinier and then the rust part needs to be much, much less shiny. All right, so now just plug this into there. And you should see an immediate change once it loads. Tweak this until you have about the right values. So that looks pretty good for me for now. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn down the scale of this noise texture to get bigger rust patches. Now I'm just gonna use this same exact color ramp, but also for the metalness. So I'm plug this into the metallic. And all these white areas here are going to be black because I don't want the rust to be metallic. After it oxidizes, it loses the metallic luster. And then I want these, and then I want the metal material to be very metallic, so turn that up. So now I just plug this factor into there, and you should see a non-metallic rust area in a very metallic metal area. So now we want some bump on this rust. Let's just move this up and out of the way, add a bump node and plug this into the normal. Now for this, you're probably actually going to want to use a noise for sure. And this is just for the bumpiness of the rust. So add a noise texture and plug this into the height. Okay, so, so now it looks kind of like this, which looks quite bad. Make sure to turn the scale up quite a bit. The detail can go up to like a three and the roughness should go up as well. You can turn up the distortion if you want. So now I want to use this rust mask as the strength. So let's just plug this into the strength. All right, so now we can just copy one of these color ramps to limit it much better. So just plug this into the strength. All right, so I just need to turn the strength way down for the metal areas. And the strength can stay pretty high for the rusted areas. Just tweak it to a value that looks good to you. All right, so now this material is basically done. You can obviously add your own things to it, and you can change it up however you want. But I would say the biggest thing to get right is this color ramp here. Sorry, this color ramp here. If your colors aren't looking great, your rust isn't either. You can make it look a lot more convincing if you spend a little more time making these color ramps look right. And I know the color ramps are all separate, so you probably want to get it right the first time, but you can probably figure out a way to use the same color ramp and then desaturate it. And then turn that into roughness and metallic maps. I don't really feel like spending the time to do that and I feel like this is much easier for someone who's starting out in Blender to figure out. Again, I want these tutorials to be something that you can pick up very easily and I want you to learn from them. I don't want these to just 
be how to make this and how to make that. If I actually teach you what's going on and how to use the nodes together, it's going to be a lot easier for you down the road. I honestly think something like this looks quite good. It's just a nice procedural rust. And if you have a really nice looking rust map, it's going to make a world of a difference. And then again, get these colors for the rust right. I, I don't think I have them correct here. It should be like a reddish orange brown. So yeah, if you get that all right, it's going to look great. Let's look over these and just take a moment to look at what it's doing. So what it's doing is it's taking this rust map. Let me go ahead and view that. It's just a noise texture. And then it's converting that into color data with the color ramp. And then it's using that same color ramp for the metallic. So that this determines what, where the metal is. This right here does. And this determines how rough it is. And this determines which areas are bumpy. So it's just taking this one noise texture and outputting it in different configurations in different places. One other thing that helps is, is instead of having this be like one white material, I know iron isn't exactly that shiny. So turning it down to a darker color also helps. Something like that looks pretty nice. And then also turning up the roughness on the metal area. So yeah, that is how you make the procedural rust material. Um, as you can see, it uses different techniques than a lot of other materials, and there's probably a thousand ways to make it. But I just wanted to show you guys the absolute easiest way to do it. Alright guys, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. I do read my comments. If there's anything you want to see me talk about, Blender related or non-Blender related, I will take your suggestions seriously. If you want to see any different types of tutorials or if you want to see how I think someone made an effect in Blender, go ahead and comment them. I want to see it. And yeah, with all that said, thank you once more for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.